Are you wondering how the cabin crew recruitment have changed during this crazy pandemic and how you can succeed at applying at the current times? In this video, we will talk about the 10 things I would do differently if I were applying to be a cabin crew today knowing what I know now. Hi, I'm Ruth and I help aspirants simplify the complicated cabin crew interviews. We are finally back! <laughs> We had a very long break on this channel and we are now better than ever. And if you could notice, now I would like to announce that every video or every vlog coming out on this channel will be also another podcast episode. So if you like consuming your information through podcast style while you're doing something, while you are working out and things like that, you could check out this podcast. It's called The Fly Podcast with Miss Kay Chris. Ready for takeoff. I will be available on your favorite podcast uh, applications in Spotify, in iTunes, and all of that jazz. We are going to be posting a new video every Mondays and a new podcast episode every Mondays at 9 a.m. every single week. Tune into this channel because we are officially back and I have so many surprises in store for you. Okay, so not just this podcast, I am also launching the first class members for the YouTube channel. What is this? Um, if you are a first class member, you get a live video stream from me every Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Philippine time. And every member gets live access to me where I answer members' questions in a group coaching setting and I give you the lesson of the day in that episode. And this is available for members only and also you will get members only exclusive videos or training videos webinars training in persons that i have done which proved to be really effective for my students and i'm gonna make it available on the members on the first class members club if you want to be a first class member just go ahead and click on join beside the subscribe button on this channel and i will see you live on wednesdays all right let's get into the video the first thing that i would do if i were to apply now knowing what i know so many years ago is that i will first check what is the airline company's non-negotiables non-negotiables means it could be the age it could be the height requirement each and every airline is different so before i even waste my time going through the traffic going through the line and going through this effort of applying to an airline i want to make sure i qualify first so i will check it through their website or through their Going to tip number two, social media pages. This did not exist during my time <laughs> because, oh my God, I'm really old now. But during our time, uh, it was just the beginning phases of social media. So we really get our information through blogs, through forums. And if you're a Gen Z, you don't know what those are. So right now the version of that is the facebook pages of certain airlines i'm gonna check in their information i have to follow them and all of their social media accounts especially agencies that post hirings for flight attendants like ipams exclusive for sometimes qatar sometimes saudi arabia airlines so i will follow them and be updated on what they are number one non-negotiables are and number two when is the hiring because the earlier you know that there is an opening of opportunity coming up to you the more time you have to prepare for that opportunity and the more prepared you will be so that's my second thing i will follow all the airline companies that i am interested in working for on the social media platforms thing number three that i will do if i were applying today is that i will up my online application game 
And again, this did not exist during my time when I was applying as a flight attendant. So, what I would do is I would make sure just the basics, you know, the basics of applying online. I want to make sure that I become like a standout candidate because it is so obvious that we need to do online interviews, right? But before that, some airlines are already doing online interviews, uh, like Dubai-based airlines. So not Emirates, another one, their low-cost counterpart. So they do this, so they would cut through the number of applicants who wants to be a flight attendant. So if I want to stand out among all the crowd what i will do is i will make sure number one audio that's a great tip guys if you are really just starting up your application you don't have money to buy all of this gadgets and microphone like this things like that a good audio will really help you out because people tend to listen more they tend to forgive if the visual is not clear and all of that but if they can hear you clearly they would listen to you more and they will be able to hear you more what you have to say more so instead of just using my cell phone i will try to put my headset jack on it this comes with your phone when you buy it or you could buy it's really cheap and then I will wear it. I wouldn't mind wearing it if I'm in the interview. It will not ruin my look. At least it has a microphone here that will make sure that I am loud and clear with the recruiter. That's just the really basic one. You don't even have to spend for that. And just make sure you have the greatest audio that you could possibly have during the interview so if you are doing your interviews in the laptop you could put this in your laptop and i'll make sure i'm in a quiet room during that time i will tell my kids or anybody in my family if you're still single that please give or reserve this time for me everybody give me a quiet time during this time just give it 30 to 1 hour for you alone in the house during your interview don't do your interview outside don't do your interview in the roadside where there's lots of happening there or you could just, if you have lots of roosters, here in the Philippines we have lots of roosters and those are really distracting during online communications. They're always like, tuk tuk every <laughs> like 10 seconds. So another tip that I could tell you that what we do right now in my work as an online person is that we download uh, this application called Crisp it's k-r-i-s-p they have this a free version every month like free minutes that you could use every single month what it will do is it will remove the noise if you are on an interview it will not hear background noise you know non-human voices so yeah if you really can't help it i will just make sure that the audio is perfect because that's the way to get through online things and what else can we do during the online application how can i step up my game so aside from the audio i would make sure that my background is clear no distractions no no laundry hanging around anywhere if i could just be in a white wall setting i will do that i just to make it simple just to make it it doesn't have to be white if you have something behind you that is like let's say plain black or plain brown background that will be okay just the wall <laughs> or somewhere in your house where it is well lit and you have a non-distracting background so if you want to talk about lighting the best way to do it you hear it all the time is just to stay in front of the window that's the best lighting there is if you could have a ring light go don't stop yourself because this is for your future so invest in a ring light they come really cheap nowadays as low as 200 pesos i was able to buy my portable ring light and it's really good it comes with a stand already so do what you can do perfect all these things that you could do to up your online application game because that's like one step that you need to pass the very first step that you need to pass online assessments if you want to be invited in the physical assessment you know the face-to-face -face, the one-on-one interview this is a stepping stone so don't 
skimp on this <laughs> all right so again that is my audio i'll make sure it's clear my background and my lighting so those are just pretty basic but you know sometimes we don't do it but it really makes a lot of difference during your application so there we go that's my online application game strategy make sure that i will put that in all right so the next thing that i would do if i were to apply now knowing what i know especially is that i would make sure that before i apply i truly understand what i am applying for i know i really want to be a flight attendant i know i dream of flying the world for free but i want to make sure that i'm the best candidate so how do i do that uh, i want to be able to talk about anything under the category of being a flight attendant whatever the recruiter will ask me to and i want to make sure that i know everything that i need to do to prepare do i need to lose weight do i need to know makeup those are like the very first thing that you think about when i was applying you know that was like the center of my universe but i was wrong because that is just the 20 percent of preparation that i needed to do after years and years of applying i have realized there is a whole other 80 percent that i need to prepare for if i want to stand out among literally thousands of applicants so i would know the scope that i need to do like what is my scope of work if i'm going to become a flight attendant what are the things that i need to prepare everything i want to list them down in one place so that i know and i could check with myself because this can get really triggering and then you might get obsessed in one thing and you forgot covering the other preparations so that is exactly what i am talking about in my book right here <laughs> the ready for take off book because the moment i realized that i have to prepare these different areas of myself and um, different preparations that i need to cover then i was able to get accepted in qatar i was able to get accepted in pa i was able to get accepted in oman air and only destiny you know knows i ended up in oman air so anyways my point is you have to know your scope of work let's go and get my book so this is it the ready for takeoff book eight proven steps to get your dream job as a flight attendant so what i did in this book is the eight things that i need to cover i put it into steps actionable steps i put it all here it's the summary of this book these eight things you need to make sure you are a-okay -okay with these eight things before the interview day because if not you might easily get slashed from the from the candidates for the people in the running to be the next flight attendant so these are the as you can see here in the book uh i have put it as the chapters okay this chapters of the book these steps these are the areas of preparation that you need to do i named them the pre-flight check like the before i even apply before i put an effort i need to check this the prepare for takeoff area this pre-flight check is checking my desire and my decision if i really want to do this i have to do the second scope which is inventory and overcoming obstacles which most people just get stuck in this area which i get i know i do i just keep on obsessing about my flaws like my teeth here i always get bashed about it Aww. but hello i become a flight attendant so it really isn't an obstacle so things like that so sometimes i get stuck here and then i forget to prepare all the rest like we also have bare minimums this is what i call the resume the pictures the dress code the grooming physical preparations knowing my posture my body language preparing my you know checklist the things that i need to bring on that day so i put that under physical preparation then we have the mental preparation a lot of applicants also think about this a lot like they don't sleep they think about like how do i answer questions like this questions like situational questions how do i ace the group interview questions how do i ace the the impact interview and things like there's so many types of interviews that you have to prepare for so mental preparation is the bulk of your preparation but before you get there you need to get into the door right so and then after you get into the door now what this is like 
this takes a lot of brain power to do so this is the mental preparation and then we have our emotional you know sometimes you're already prepared physically and mentally but then your emotions are not prepared i really got <laughs> there was a time i go i got through this step and then the moment that i was really stuck on this step and you know you will know if you read the book and for those of you who already did you know you know people who like have fun, having problems with love life and all of that those are emotional preparations that you need to do the spiritual preparation and lastly taking action so how do you take action literally what are the things that you need to do right after you read the book so this book has been published uh, after i resigned it's five years ago already and so many people have been messaging me that they got the job because of this just because for the simple reason i believe it's because you cover everything that you need to cover and you could only be as prepared as you can be if you covered everything that you need to prepare for that day and because you are the most prepared candidate definitely you are the most likely person that they will hire because of that so it's just a guide the work still comes to you but you know what if i was applying if i were applying again today during this day and age post pandemic i would still do these things i would still do it the more because it's been proven and i have so many students message me all over the world it's been effective to them and i know myself it if it is effective to me so I will not go to the interview without this. I know I'm a little bit self-promoting, but guys, it's just effective. That's why I would <laughs> recommend it. The next thing that I would do if I were applying today as a cabin crew is I would make sure that I create the best of the best resume, cover letter, and CV during the interview. You know what, when I was applying years, years and years ago, I was all over the place. I don't even understand what a curriculum vitae is or a CV or what is a cover letter. What the heck would I put on a cover letter? And even to this day and age, if you search cover letters, there's so many examples. You cannot just copy paste it to your application. It's like my brain, I'm having a brain drain. It's like it's hurting because I have to figure out what would i ever put in my cover letter and things like that no because this has been like a block for me for the longest time i know that i write blogs and i write you know i do social media but writing a formal letter can sometimes be very intimidating especially for us who don't tend to think of ourselves as academically you know excellent and things like that so it's a challenge right so i would make sure that i'm going to have the best version of my resume best version of my cover letter and my cv because you know what there's so many stories out there that i hear that on the day of the interview, the recruiter would just look at their resume, like two minutes, read it, skim through it, and ask you one question, and pff, you're gone. And then they would ask me, why didn't I, why didn't she even look at me? Why didn't I even get like a one-on-one -on -one interview or things like that? Because ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand this. The first, first step, <laughs> even before they talk to you, the first thing that they will check is are you good in english are you any good in english are you any good in formal writing it's like the first barrier that you have to pass if they're even gonna look at you because they don't want to waste their time they have a thousand people literally at the door waiting for them so if you're you're not good on paper why would they even take the time of the day to take a look at you <laughs> you know I, so if your like resumes are like so messy not aligned and things like that i know it's so petty and it's so like being very oc obsessive compulsive but guys it is effective and that that is why a lot of people make sure that their resume cover letter in cv 
will be perfect because even before the recruiter get to meet you and get to know you they already have an impression of how well you have prepared for this is this something that you just copy paste on google and print it out <laughs> on the day of the interview they would know because you know they see lots and lots of cvs every day and this is their job they get to screen these cvs every day and they would know if this is just a generic resume that you copy pasted for you just change your information it's not really for a flight attendant position you know that's a pain point for me when i was applying before so this is something that i really wish i knew when i was applying years and years before so right now if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it right okay <laughs> this has inspired my latest program or my latest online course on the miss k chris channel and this is what i call the hashtag fa8 toolbox in which i have created a done for you editable templates to guide you on where you can have the right words written in your resume it you can make it look professional and make it look you know really i'm serious i'm getting this job <laughs> make it cohesive but surprisingly simple and easy to digest for the recruiter who spends days and days and hours in a day looking at resumes on a daily basis, <laughs> you know? So literally, what you have to do if you avail of this course is you just have to download my .docx document template or my, mm, even better, Canva template and just edit it to your specific information and then you could just sentences are already there you could just change the skills just edit it to your advantage and to highlight what is your skills and strengths so if you use my done for you editable template you take all the work and the stress out of it it's already done for you like i said and it has two different types because i already know that most of you who listen to me are either fresh graduates still studying no experience so i've created especially for you a template or a document is specific for your situation and another one is for people who have experience who have jobs before and want to become a flight attendant i also have a separate template for you so guys this is not a copy paste type of resume or cv i really thought this out and i really thought about you and what you need for your application and this is it this is for you <laughs> so if you are interested check out my hashtag FAA toolbox in where not just the templates I have so many other things in store for you in that online course and everything that you need for a successful cabin crew application will be there in one box all right so i'm shamelessly plugging my online course that's one of the surprises i have in store for you on this comeback oh yeah so many surprises already right so we have the podcast and then we have the YouTube membership and we have FA8 Toolbox course. It's available now on my website. If you're interested, just go and check it out after this video. So if you are loving this content so far, please let me know by liking this video or leaving a podcast review. If you are listening over at our podcast channels, I really, really appreciate it whenever I hear back from you and you have no idea how it makes me so happy because producing Using these videos and podcast episodes is a lot of hard work guys especially now i'm not a flight attendant anymore <laughs> i'm a full-time mom and i really take the time to really create these videos for you so go ahead and leave a like leave a comment and a review i would really appreciate it and guys watch until the very end of this video where i would be answering a question of the day about being chubby and applying as a flight attendant so let's go ahead and continue with our 10 things <laughs> so here is the sixth thing that i would do differently if i were applying today i will make sure i would get my grooming and my photos right 
because if you follow me before you know that i got in the flight attendant job in qatar airways but my photos is so crazy <laughs> that i got on the hold i was put on a hold status and because i was in the hold status everybody that is in the interview with me are already flying to qatar and i'm still waiting to get my photos right so you could imagine how frustrating that is for me and how so much tears was shed because of that <laughs> So if I were applying today, I'm gonna make sure I got it right, okay? So story time, yeah, that's the story time of my Qatar Airways application. Because I didn't know that Qatar is very specific to their photos. They even have these guidelines, these standard photos. How you stand, what are you gonna wear, what colors you're gonna wear, what colors your lipstick, what nail polish can you wear on your pictures, and what type of jewelries. So every single time there is a mistake on my photo, every single time they give it back to me and tell me, take another one. And that is how many months and yeah, i have to wait for them to respond to me because of the number or the volume of their applicants under their processing system so oh my god you don't know how frustrating and heartbreaking this is so yeah uh that's what i did i'm gonna make sure that i'm gonna get it right so how do we get the guidelines you could just easily google the qatar airways guidelines and i also included it in my online course because everything you need for a successful cabin interview is there right so i do have photo guidelines specifically for qatar airways and i do have grooming standards guidelines because you know what guys even if you're applying to another airline they still have like the general guidelines if you are taking the photos so you don't want to be in that situation where you have to retake your photo because you know what some of them will realize that I already have another applicant for this position and this applicant just can't get her photo right so we could just pass her up after all those days and stages of interview the hard work that you put in your interview you were just getting passed up because you can't get your photos <laughs> so that's so crazy so anyways that's the thing number six number seven I'm going to prepare physically properly you know how do you do this properly how do you properly physically prepare for the flight attendant position the common misconception is that when you prepare physically for the flight attendant position we all obsess on our flaws we all obsess on our weight on our skin on our teeth every single thing this is a mistake okay this is not the proper way to prepare but we are only human and this is what we do and this is what i have done for years and years and years of applying even if i was already a local airline hostess i still do this mistake because i'm just really obsessed with my plus or things like that but you know what if you would just let it go let it go you know let it go i will make sure i have the right bmi and my skin is clear on that day and that's it i will not obsess over it because i waste so much time so much precious time so much precious preparation time that i could have used to do my proper physical preparation what is this this is i would practice my posture i would practice my body language how I answer questions. So this is physical for me. This is the physical preparation. I would make sure that every physical thing that I need to prepare or to bring is there. So I have my resume, my picture, my extra water, extra candies, you know, my inspirational music is on my bag, things like that. And make sure that I know how to walk, I know how to sit down properly, and I know how to present myself in the best light possible, which conveys things like confidence, assertiveness. You know, this is what I would prepare instead of trying to do my makeup erase it and do my makeup again because you know guys these are just basic and bare minimums it's just on this level and this level okay you know my resume done my height check and my grooming check done and then other things that they would evaluate or really decide that they would get me is that throughout the interview i have proper posture throughout the interaction i have proper body language i am exuding confidence you know things like that i am practicing my english my speaking skills so these are the 
physical preparations that I would obsess about instead of obsessing about my crooked teeth <laughs> right here, which I do get bashed about all the time. Oh, I already mentioned that. So all of you bashers, haters who are bashing me because I have a crooked teeth, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm already I really hope that instead of bashing me you would realize that oh that girl has a crooked teeth and now she she flew as an international flight attendant and she's teaching other imperfect people how to get the job as well so I hope you realize that one day I don't know maybe when you become more mature but guys I'm over it I know I have a crooked teeth and I'm not obsessed about it I properly obsessed about other things before my you know interview and thank god I got in and thank God among the hundreds and hundreds of other applicants they chose me why because I did not obsess about my flaws and I made sure my posture is right my body language is right my English on that day is excellent so there you have it <laughs> that's what I would do now on my number eight thing that I would do differently this time is I would prepare mentally you know I would spend so much time in preparing mentally so that I will not have mental blocks on the day. <laughs> I would make sure that I am prepared to the amount of brain draining activities that will happen during the interview. <laughs> like there will be an English and math test. I tried applying for Air Asia Philippines and oh my god. God, the test is so difficult. It feels like I'm applying for a university <laughs> entrance exam. UP, <laughs> UP levels, University of the Philippines level. For us here, it's like the uni. It's like the most coveted university. And it's so hard to pass. You know, you really have to be really smart to pass it. So during the Air Asia application time, I applied with a lot of my colleagues, even my seniors, and I remember that, oh my god, it's so hard. It's like 200 items of English test, comprehensive, you know, subject verb agreement. Uh, there is time zone math problems. And I was like, oh my god, I'm not prepared for this because it's the first thing that you do even before they do a face to face interview. They just, you know, these airlines, they just want to screen you out, you know, without everybody because it's too much. There's so many applicants. They just weed out everything. They just try to find and find more ways just to weed out the applicants and get the quality ones, you know, from the resume, from this English test, from the height test. They just find new ways of doing this so that they would spend their precious time to potential, you know, high potential candidates. So there you have it. I would prepare mentally for this. I would make sure that... I have done my research, airline research, you know, this is something, is a part of my mental preparation, something I've been teaching my students. So I have a list of what you need to research about the airline that you are applying for, like their tagline, their colors, what are their history, where, what is the country, what are their hubs, what route do they fly, uh, what are their tagline, and what's their brand all about things like that so it's really important that you communicate this because when you communicate this things that you have researched on you instantly become the standout candidate you instantly become the smart one the well-researched one very good potential one you know i would like to know her more on a one-on-one -on -one interview one <laughs> so you gotta do your airline research guys aside from that i have to prepare for the one-on-one -on -one interviews you know the behavioral type of questions and prepare for the group type of interview so so many things to prepare mentally it's so overwhelming and like i said this is something that i didn't know before and now that i know what i know i'm gonna spend so much time on this because this is how i will get the job 
so don't worry all you have to do is make sure that you put it up in a checklist all the things that you need to do like airline research english and math test final interview questions one-on-one -on -one interview questions situational interview questions airline related questions and then prepare for them so i have created a guide on how to do this exactly how to answer one-on-one -on -one questions how to answer situational questions how to do your own airline research before your interview so i've included this guide in the hashtag faa toolbox course it's all in there so you don't have to rock your brains anymore and it took me years to create this guys so i'm putting it all on this toolbox because i just want you to succeed <laughs> and everything you need for a successful cabin crew interview will be there so check it out if you haven't checked out my course it is on my website or i'm gonna put the links in the show notes or here on the description box in youtube again another shameless plug i know but because it's really really good i promise you guys this is everything that you need for your interview and it doesn't even cost that much and it took me years to figure this out so I'm giving it to you now in the course. So lucky you. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the number nine thing that I would do if I were applying as a cabin crew today. One more thing that I would add to my mental preparation is the pandemic related questions or situations that they usually ask nowadays in the interviews during this time and age so we all know that we all gone through the pandemic and it happened everywhere all countries are affected and so i will just expect this to happen it's just the natural course of action for the airline recruiters so some of the things that might be related under this category is that i'm gonna ask myself if i'm you know there's a lot of people i respect everybody there are people who are anti-vaxxers they don't want to get vaccinated so i'm gonna weigh my options if i want to get vaccinated and then work because sometimes it's a requirement you have no choice you really have to be vaccinated to be able to provide safe service to the passengers so that's one thing i would have to prepare for that and the next thing is i would just understand that because it's the pandemic and a lot of cabin crew was laid off when the pandemic started and then when they are going to hire again they would prioritize that because they want somebody who has they don't have to train anymore they're cost cutting and things like that so i would understand ex cabin crew will have an advantage but i would still try because you never know when you might get your chance and last but not the least i would make sure i prepare for pandemic related questions that might come up during the interview these are questions like am i willing to do quarantine if i do a layover to another country or what have i learned during this trying times of the pandemic and what do i think is different now in the flying industry during midst the ongoing pandemic what do i think has changed and how we can have an edge over the other airlines and what is my role in that how can i be an asset to the company during the ongoing pandemic things like that i'll just expect that this is just the natural course of events <laughs> and i will just have to prepare for these types of questions i would do a dedicated video or question tutorials interview question tutorials on this channel about pandemic related interviews so tune into that subscribe to this channel to catch that and turn on the notification bell to be able to catch it when it's live all right it's gonna be our focus next month on june i'm gonna do a lot of pandemic related question tutorials and how to answer them so yeah exciting times guys exciting times the tenth thing that i would do if i were applying today this is something that did not exist on my time again but i'm gonna do this because this is relevant and this is how we go how we roll this time <laughs> this is how we do it nowadays i would be cleaning up my social media timeline even when you are applying to a company it's part of their background check to see your timeline now it's so weird i know it didn't happen before 
But we do this because we have our own company and we do this when we are hiring people. We check their Facebook feed, we check their Twitter feed, we check their Instagram feed. And if there are signs and symptoms of a toxic person, <laughs> we will not hire them so it's just a part of our checklist before we go to the final step of the process of hiring a person make sure that this person is not toxic he didn't do anything online i would use my own judgment because you know there is this argument about freedom of speech expressing yourself but guys if you are planning to become a professional flight attendant to be hired by a big company you gotta clean up your act you have to keep things that are either i will keep the things that i'm not so sure about in private and keep it to my close family and friends only it's not out there in the public you know public status so all my timeline there should not be any negativity in there there should not be any political opinions there there should not be like strong religious feelings on my timeline on my feed i know these are all like part of being human but nowadays you have to adapt on what's happening and how are the recruitments are going on and this is one of the things or one of the steps they have implemented to screen candidates so you have to be on the good side of that right just keep things private private or just remove anything that would cost you the flight attendant position or the candidacy <laughs> all right all right so that's the tenth thing unfortunately this is happening now and this is how the companies are doing it so it's part of the background check process so they try to look for red flags that might come up on your timeline so what are these red flags like i said it could be a negativity pose it could be you're fighting someone <laughs> pose it could be about religion politics and things like that so just try to keep it neutral and clean maybe just for the time being that you are applying sometimes they even check tweets from five years ago 10 years ago you know they say people change but you know once you put it out there in social media it's there forever so make sure you clean it up guys <laughs> just do it <laughs> I really want to know can you comment below if you keep your social media private or in public free for all to see <laughs> all right so that is my question for you I will wait for it on the comment section let me know what you do just comment public or private that's it question of the day for this video is uh, she recently attended a flight attendant interview and the recruiter was just looking at her physical body not even asking her so many questions and she's asking me if is it because that she is chubby that she didn't get the job and she got rejected on that interview so my answer for this ladies and gentlemen my take on this is no it's not because you're chubby because i've seen it in myself i have batchmates i have colleagues or i have friends who are like really chubby really big but they're within the bmi levels but they look puff and you know things like that and they even got the job before i did <laughs> there's this one girl she got to qatar airways before i did so I, I it's really not the chubby guys and also when i was flying as a flight attendant already you have a right <laughs> as long as you don't exceed the bmi you know you don't exceed uh the levels of where you are healthy you are still a good candidate for a flight attendant position it's not because of your weight this did not exist in the world of flight attendant you know the way sometimes you might feel like there's a weight discrimination going on just because of the image of the flight attendant but no guys no in reality i have so many colleagues and me myself i got big before and guys it's not a big deal but this is what i would say it could be how you carried yourself during the interview because us when we are like uh, a little bit on the heavy side it really is about confidence guys so if you show up and you're confident you're assertive you have this enthusiastic joyful presence on you and you fit the bmi you know you're just right so no matter how you look if you feel like you don't look perfect or the image of the flight attendant it won't matter because you showed up confident you showed up prepared 
you answer the right answer in the question. So they will get you, of course. It's just a checklist, guys, that they have to check. Do you get the BMI? Check. Next thing to judge you for. Uh, maybe you are not doing the right posture because you are feeling conscious about your body and things like that. So when you're a flight attendant, it's very important to show off confident on the interview because the flight attendant job is like you're going to be a fish in a bowl. Everybody looks at you and then if you're not comfortable with that, they just wouldn't get people like that because there might be problems along the way. So they naturally gravitate towards candidates who are like, okay, when being scrutinized, given negative feedback, but still carry themselves with and grace because that's how they want to represent the airline company so yeah not because you're shabby maybe could be another a lot of factors maybe a confidence issue the way you answer issue the way you carry yourself issue body posture things like that so that's my take on the question of the day all right so all my chubby peeps right there you can still do it i don't know if i still have the picture of my friend she's still chubby until to this day and she's still flying for qatar airways so she's an inspiration guys all right so if you are serious about pursuing this life-changing career i highly recommend for you to make use of the hashtag faa toolbox i created to have everything you need for a successful cabin crew interview in a box. This toolbox contains over 20 interview guides and editable templates for resumes, CVs, and cover letters with sample documents that is done for you. All you have to do is personalize it to help your flight attendant application become the obvious and standout choice. In addition to that, it also contains powerful tools to help you prepare for the day. I have photo guides, grooming guides, things like this that will get your photos right, perfect your grooming, answer the interview questions with finesse, and win them over. This toolbox was curated over several years of me trying to get my dream job, and this is something I wished existed during my time before I started applying. It would have made my journey much more smoother and maybe I didn't have to wait eight years to fly international I will link it below if you are interested it will be on the description box or in the show notes if you are listening over our podcast episode make sure that you tune in next Monday because we will be talking about the cabin crew resume CV and cover letter tips what you need to know and five advanced tips updated ones for this time and age that's going to be live next monday nine o'clock for the meantime if you are preparing for an upcoming interview you are not quite ready to take or to buy my hashtag faa toolbox course you can create your documents from scratch using the tips i have on my resume playlist this have tips on how to do your resume your curriculum vitae and your cover letters specifically for the cabin crew or flight attendant position so it is here right on the screen just click on it somewhere here it will be there for you and it is free so go ahead and check out the playlist and perfect your resumes and i will fly with you soon bye